Hi, friends. Welcome to Getting Your Real Estate Life Together. I'm Tracy Hicks with All Things Real Estate. And today I have my super awesome good friend, realtor friend, Christy Marshall. Welcome, Christy. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to try to make this as brief as possible, but I'm excited to have you on and i say this about everybody but you in particular we have a long history and i don't talk about my brokerage very often because people get it confused with like with all things real estate they're all well why would i shop at a store that from a brokerage owner or whatever it, it just confuses things so i don't talk about dwell a whole lot and so today i get the opportunity to talk about dwell and to talk about you because you're doing some amazing things so i'm just going to quickly say a few things and then i'm going to let you introduce yourself okay so christy's been a dwell agent with us for a really long time if she remembers i'll let her tell it <laughs> over 10 years right it's been over 10 years i think yeah okay okay when did you guys open up your shop i was right after that i want to say 12 years ago almost okay. 12 years ago yeah, yeah you were one of the first agents that we brought on so again being a brokerage owner and having agents with you like we it's a we have a small boutique office we have 25 ish uh realtors but for a long time we had like 12. so we're a small family and chris my business partner and i started dwell because we wanted to hang out with people that were just as awesome as we were and we definitely attract those type of agents so i get to talk to christy today which i'm again very excited about christy also how many years ago did you move? It was three years ago. Really? Oh. Yeah. So <laughs> Christy and her family decided to move to Colorado, but she didn't want to stop realtoring in Portland. So this girl <laughs> realtors in both Colorado and in Portland. And we're hearing more and more realtors do this. So I definitely want to talk to you about that because I think it's amazing and not everybody can do that. <laughs> you do it really well. So I want you to to share share the love on that. And then I also want to talk about how you transitioned into being a realtor in a brand new state. Like you've been in Portland, well, you were in Portland all your life, right? Right, pretty much off and on. Yeah. And then just to say, you know, your family moved to Colorado and then you're like, okay, I'm gonna realtor here too. And Christy's done some really awesome, funny, kooky, very her type things. <laughs> I want to talk about that too. She's been in the local news as well. <laughs> I don't even think you were there a year and you were in the newspaper. <laughs> it was too. So, okay. So that was my long introduction and my relationship with Christy. And so I definitely want to start off with talking about this whole realtoring in both states. Like, how did that happen? Tell us the quick story, because that's an awesome one, too, about why you guys moved and the kids and husband and all that good stuff. So how did that happen? Right. So about, let's see, in, in the beginning of 2016, my husband, who's a business professor for Portland State University, looked up from his computer and said, hey, what do you think about semester at sea? <laughs> And I, I simply looked over at him and I said, is this even real? You know, I don't know what you, I couldn't, I don't even know what you're talking about. So he, he's always been an idea guy. And so he went ahead and, and applied for a position aboard a ship with uh, 600 college students. He got the position and he taught a course in social entrepreneurship. So we took our two boys, they were then eight and 11, aboard the ship. We moved into about 500 square feet, all four of us, <laughs> a single bathroom. You know, our beds were side by side. You could reach any family member at any point. <laughs> you know, if you reached your hand out, you often encountered a human body. Um, and so we sailed the world. We went to 13 countries. My husband taught aboard the ship and I went ahead and took a position as a, let's see, it's a dependent care coordinator. So that means kids under the age of 18 needed some activities at times in the afternoon. And so I took on that position, but I was also selling real estate aboard a ship from the <laughs> Indian Ocean 
<laughs> uh, you know, using email and then also working with my real estate team in Portland. Uh, we were about 18 hours, you know, time difference. It was right. night when it was day. So sometimes I was a little, uh, not, not as fast as I needed to be getting to people, but I was writing documents and uh, getting listings ready to the, go to the market aboard the ship and, you know, out uh, just sailing around the planet. So there at that point, my husband was talking to a bunch of the people at Semester at Sea, and they suggested that he apply for a position with them. Oddly enough, this position is held in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is completely landlocked, mm -hmm. nowhere near the ocean. <laughs> right. but, but he took on the position of CEO for Semester at Sea, and we moved down to Colorado. I was not quite sure how it was going to work out with real estate. I knew I had, um, you know, sailed around the planet and managed to keep our team together and managed to keep real estate sales moving, you know, even while I'm at sea and I almost had no, very little connectivity right. um, to do my job, but packed up the family, moved them to Colorado and then kind of approached our team again and said, Hey guys, let's just keep pushing. Let's see if we can continue to work together. Right. And at the time, we'll talk about the team real quickly because I forgot to mention, sorry, Eric, and you've had a few other team, but how, how did your team work? Like you had already, that you had already been a team for years prior to that. That's correct. Yeah. Eric and I formed a team about eight years ago. It was pretty right. funny. Eric was getting started um, in his real estate career and simply got too busy. And I was in the same boat where it, you know how it is being a realtor and you can't leave town. You can't leave yep. your phone behind for three minutes to take right. a shower <laughs> and continue to uh, you press forward. It just became overwhelming and basically became not enjoyable anymore when you right. have too much going on. Yeah. And then the other piece for me was that my, let's see, how would you say it? So when you're so busy, it is difficult to keep track of all of the details and push forward 24 hours a day. And so I saw my quality start, start to drop a little bit. And I said, I need, I need a team. I need somebody else who can help me lift this load. Or when I need a Saturday night to have two hours to myself to attend to my family or whatever needs to happen that Saturday, I need to be able to walk away from my phone for my own mental health right. for two hours and know that the wheels are still churning. Yeah. Yeah. So Eric and I started talking and we decided that we could just give it a go. We didn't have anything in writing. We didn't have any plans. We didn't know how to split it. We didn't know who was paying what. We had no idea yeah. how we were going to pull this team together. But we simply said, I have your back. You've got mine. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay. So, and another thing about that too is I get a lot of questions about that, you know, in terms of like building a team or having a partner or, right. you know, a co agent or buyers or, you know, uh, there's so many different ways to structure it. And I think that that's what I always tell people is like, you have to structure it in a way that works for you. It's great to listen to however, you know, people are doing it so you can get ideas, but you can really tailor it. Just like you said, you were like, we don't, we didn't know what it looked like. We just knew right. we were going to work together and help each other out. And then, you know, it kind of it naturally came together. Now, how do you guys do, do you guys do it you guys do it differently than a lot of people. Oh, it's just, just, it's bonkersville. I mean, yeah. we are negotiating splits on every transaction, just dependent upon what color the sun is that day. <laughs> and that's because we've been working together for eight, nine years. And we we're, I mean, we're family. We have each other's back. There's, yeah. you know, I, he trusts me as much as I trust him. Yep. But we also have seen over those eight years that when you give more to the other party or when you increase percentages, we kind of work in this level. We, we like to use the word abundance a lot. If you hand something over to somebody else, if you're more giving and more generous, it comes back to you 18 times more than you can ever imagine. And I have a lot of brokers that reach out to me and say, oh, how did you structure your team? And I'm like, it's completely organic on every single day. Eric and I have now for eight years managed to figure out what makes sense in each situation. And part of the reason we can do that is because we are at Dwell, which recognizes that we are running our own business under the umbrella of Dwell Realty, but that we get to choose what makes the most sense for us and for our clients and for the people we are serving in that minute. 
that, yeah. that day. Totally. So we, you know, we're, we're not attempting to make quotas and, you know, we're our own bosses. So at yeah. some points I don't even touch or I don't even interact with clients that are working with our team. But what I am doing is the paperwork behind the scenes or what I am doing is getting all the vendors lined up or what I am doing. So they, they know I'm there, yeah. but they don't necessarily, they're not interacting with both of us on a daily basis. Right. When other times clients want both of our opinions on every single issue. Yeah. You just don't know where it's going to go. And that's the fun of it all. It's, you know, one of the things that drew me to real estate is the fact that you never do the same thing twice. Yep. <laughs> and you, that's and for me, that works with my personality. I, I like the, yeah. the every day is different. Every yep. client is different. Every negotiation, every piece of paperwork. That's how we approach the team. When I talk to other people about creating teams, they want it in a contract. They want it in a document. They want everything signed, sealed, and delivered. They want concrete. And that is not us. We right. are not in that category. It's just more familial almost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also going back to you talking about everything being a little bit, you know, it's organic and every time is different, which might seem bonkers, like you said, to right. other for people. For some people, it's so yeah. scary. <laughs> but for you and Eric, that works. And that is what realtors forget about all the time is themselves and how they feel about a particular, you know, building a team or right. structuring right. their business. Right. Like you have to take yourself into consideration and realtors are too busy thinking about everybody else all the time. And so these are times where you really have to consider yourself and structure your business in a way that works for you, not what everybody else is telling you or what they always know what's best or are worried about what's best about their clients, right? No, absolutely. All the time. Absolutely. And you know, there's different kind of brokers. There's the easy peasy kind of just roll with whatever, you know, comes across. I always say we we say yes to everything at least once. <laughs> we say yes, we explore it, we determine if it works for us or not. And I mean, that's where my biggest successes have come from in life and then in parenting and in realtoring and in this crazy life we're living yeah. is simply saying yes and exploring. And I would say the same for this podcast. You asked me, do you want to come on? And I'm like, I don't have an answer. So that <laughs> means yes. Yep. <laughs> right? Yeah. I will try anything at least once. Exactly. And a lot of times when you let those doors open, you just don't know where you're headed. I've never been one to write my personal goals down every year. You know, they are yeah. all those goal setting worksheets yep. or goal setting activities or like, I understand the idea, Yeah. but I'm like, if I write a goal down, I feel trapped Yep. <laughs> and I yep. can't be my flexible, random say yes self when an idea pops up. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have to do everything all the you time. You can't I do everything. You know, I have general goals. Like I want to make X amount of dollars this year. And this is how I think I'm going to do it. Yeah. But you just have to be flexible. At yeah. least I do. That's who I am. I can't handle. <laughs> and that's the only way things work for you is if you do it the way that works for you and, and who you are. And I can't say that enough. So I'm glad that you said that. And the, um, on the on the team thing, you know, the, the biggest hes hesitation I've seen over the years, and I'm also working in a less structured team down here in Colorado. Yeah. You know, and it's the same thing. It's like case by case, we work it out so that the other people, the other person knows they feel valued and that they are receiving the compensation they're due for yeah. the work they've put in. Yeah. So many people ask me about creating a team and, and they want that structure. And all I can say to them is in my experience, when you open the door to having more ideas, more solutions, different personalities that the clients can connect with off and on in different ways, your income will go up. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand. They say, oh, you know, you're giving 60% to your partner on every transaction. And I'm like, well, it's not every transaction, but that 60% going over to that other teammate means that I can be out doing other things. I can be out connecting with other people. I can be out creating more solutions for our clients. I can be talking to lenders more. I can be investigating the newest lender laws, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. Okay. So you talked about Colorado. I want to 
I want to go down that road because okay. <laughs> I can't imagine going to another state and then after being a realtor for so long in one city or state and then going right. to another state and like feeling like you're starting all over and you were able to do it a little bit differently just because you had some flexibility, but talk to us about how that process worked for you and like getting down there, obviously packing up the house and, and, right, moving right. and two kids and <laughs> you know, all that aside. Like, how did your realtor experience go in deciding like where you were going to land as a brokerage and all the different kind of things that you thought about and how, what you ultimately landed with and decided sure, the structure? Sure. So Colorado is a reciprocal state to Oregon, which means I don't have to do the national exam again. The only mm -hmm. exam I had to pass was the Colorado state exam. Yeah. So that makes it a little less onerous to get your license upon getting, and I, once you take that real estate license and you've been practicing, I think I've been in 17 years, the questions can be answered in different, can be asked in different ways, but the basic information remains the same, no matter what state you're working in agency, those kind of, you know, the, the big topics that you mm -hmm. get on those exams, it's the same set of information. It might be asked a different way. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's all designed to protect the public. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you know, the test was not onerous. I landed in a brokerage when I first got here that it really wasn't the best fit for me, but more of my plan for that first year in was to sit back and watch, learn what the reputations of the schools were, what the reputations of the neighborhoods were, what, what the price points were, all of those things in my hyper local. So Fort Collins is quite small compared to Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And so it really matters. You need to know which street is the dividing line for the schools. You need to know which neighborhoods you would pay more to live in or, or you don't want to pay more to live in and all of those things. So I took the first year really as getting to know my new town, getting to know which real estate brokers, you know, are heavy hitters, which real estate brokers work in the rural areas. And so I just kind of sat back and learned that first year without much push. I didn't push myself. Right. We're also adjusting personally. You know, the children needed, the kids needed more support than they typically would need at the ages we moved them. It was a new world. And we had to buy our own house. I bought, we bought our own <laughs> house down here. We, we rented for three months and I bought this house. I wrote the offer on Christmas Eve because I figured, well, nobody else is writing <laughs> offers on Christmas Eve from Portland, Oregon. And I wrote an offer on a house I had never seen before in a neighborhood I've ne never been to. Oh my gosh. We got it accepted. And we closed at the end of February that year, and I had never set foot in the home. Oh, my gosh. I know. I was like, if anybody could pull this off, if it's anybody you. can actually buy a house <laughs> without stepping foot in it, I can do it because I've had clients who have done it, and it's worked out. And I know this business, and I know how to, you know. So, so funny. The first day we walked in, I was already an owner of the house. Right. Right hadn't seen it prior to that. That had to feel so weird. Oh my God. It was crazy. People were like, you did what? And I was like, well, if I can't do this, how right. can I ask my clients, clients to, to do, do it? it? Yep. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, when COVID hit, it was kind of funny because I was like, well, I've been operating in this virtual, no contact, no personal contact world now for almost two and a half years. I've been selling real estate in Portland from Colorado. I've been selling real estate in Colorado from Portland. Sometimes I don't get to see the houses that I am um, helping to purchase or helping to sell. Yeah. But I have a lot, a lot of tricks on how I can get all the information I need. Right. Um, so COVID hits and the real estate world goes crazy. And they're like, ah, how are we supposed to do our job? And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what's challenging to you? I don't understand. <laughs> Yep. So anyway, so I landed at a brokerage that um, it was small, another boutique brokerage. I definitely am not a big box broker. We mm -hmm. know that. I've proven that to myself time and time again. But watching the groups around town, I located the right place for myself. And it was a place called Hub Real Estate. They have their medium sized, I think you would say, maybe yeah, 50. Yeah. 50 different brokers and they're doing a lot of great things for the community that they serve. And there's a lot of different personalities in there. And so I jumped aboard with them about a year and a half ago. And so they have, you know, in-house education, but mostly what I like is the network of brokers because they have commercial brokers. They've got brokers down in Denver. I've been ending up doing a lot of referral business for people in Portland who are now investing in the Denver market. 
Mm-hmm. I also keep myself super local. So I am just focused on the Fort Collins and surrounding area. Denver's about 40 minutes south of us, and I'm not going to dabble in that market. Yeah, yeah. The reason being is I'm already an expert in Portland and already an expert in Fort Collins. And that is enough no. of geographical area <laughs> yep. for one brain to attempt <laughs> to handle. Span. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then what I ended up doing with COVID, and I think you know this, is I personally in Portland, our sphere of business wasn't moving at that point. They wanted to stay in their homes. You know, most of them already own their homes. Mm -hmm. And so they were all last year waiting to see how things were going to go. So our book of business was a little quieter last year. Yeah. And this year it's already off to an explosive start for this 2021. We knew it always goes in cycles. But so I picked up some transaction coordinating work for the Dwell Realty Brokers. <laughs> and the reason I went that direction is because I need to be collaborative to be happy. And I can support, you know, not only am I moving paperwork around, but I'm supporting those brokers who are alone in the world up against real estate all by themselves. And sure, it's about the paperwork and it's about keeping them organized. But it's also about collaborating on listing prices and collaborating on repair addendums between me and them. So I get to watch what they do and and then sometimes get them moving when they've become stuck in a transaction. Right, right. And having that other person to bounce those things off that already know about the transaction because you're doing the paperwork. So you already know the backstory is super helpful. And I think every realtor feels alone in transactions often. And so I love that you said that about, you know, even though you're pushing paperwork, as you mentioned, it's more than that. It's about collaboration for you. And um, I don't think people really realize that. And I'm sure the transaction coordinators around, around the world probably feel that way too. I just never really thought of that. No, it's absolutely. I mean, I'm doing real estate and I'm not transaction coordinating for a lot of people, but those people that I am, I really feel like I'm giving them a piece of me, Uh, you know, when I did real estate by myself and I see a lot of the brokers, when you do real estate by yourself, you're alone on an Island, your clients come and go as you help them through the transaction and through maybe it takes three months to get them into a house. Maybe it takes a little longer, but they're not your support system. You're right. supposed to be theirs. Theirs. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. You know, it, you're, you're their, their confidant and their counselor and their cruise director, Yep. <laughs> but you're not asking them for support back. Cause that's totally ridiculous and inappropriate while you're trying to get them right. <laughs> through a real estate transaction, which yep. is one of the most stressful situations in their entire life. Oh, totally. Yeah, no, for sure. So I don't think brokers take care of themselves. I'm like, no, you handled that perfectly well. I mean, I can support them as a transaction coordinator and say, that was brilliant. What you just did there. Yeah. Your solution is awesome. I, I hope you know that. I love that. I mean, you're uh, it's true. Realtors don't give themselves enough credit or they don't they don't seek approval. You know, well, I, I won't speak for everyone, but for the most part realtors are head down, get the job done yeah. like, yeah. you know, and they don't take enough time for themselves and you know, self-care and things all that stuff is is slowly coming up, but I can see you know, you hear more and more of it in social media and taking right. time for yourself. Right. I can guarantee you most realtors are like, yeah, whatever, that doesn't exist. You know, I've got to work. It's just their right. brain. Well, and you have to answer that phone. And I mean, some of our work is a bit contentious. People are not happy with us or other brokers, you know, are as frustrated as we are. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's an odd job in that yeah. way. Yeah. And, you know, I think we all have this idea of self-care and, some of us do a good job of it, but when you're constantly working alone and I I just think it helps for me to be able to say, I love the way you creatively worked towards the solution that works. 
did you know you had done that? And half the time they don't even know they did it. Yeah, no. And I'm like, that's a miracle. What you just did there is a miracle. Did your clients know what you did for them? No, usually not. They have no idea. (laughs) Right. You know, because you're hiding the problems and you're hiding the struggles and you're hiding the conflicts from them, not in a malicious way, but simply because that's your job. Yeah. Yeah. No, to I get always, them from point A to point B without tears. Yeah. Right. Well, and I, I always talk to realtors about their community and who they talk to in their, their group. And right. we all know that realtors need to talk to other realtors about things because realtors understand what realtors are going through. And so there has to be that community and you are that community for them. And they probably just don't even realize it. And it is important for them to to talk about, it's impossible for realtors to get into a room and not talk about real estate. Right. I mean, it's just, you know, whether (laughs) it it be, yeah, (laughs) whether it be them talking about it or the second you say you're in real estate and people want to talk to you about that. And so you're on all the time and you have to have someone to talk to. That's not your significant other. Who's probably like either you've bored them to death with stuff or they don't understand it. And so when you're talking to somebody about certain things that they don't understand, you're still not getting what you need. You might be getting it off your chest, but you're probably still thinking about it because we're always well, trying to solve problems. Well, you have to create the solution. Yeah. You know, you have <laughs> to come to up with a solution. And a spouse or a significant other is not invested to find that solution, nor are they trained to do it. Yeah. And yeah. so if you have a partner or somebody else, a partner or me as a transaction coordinator, like it fills me to help people see their and You're brilliance. getting something out of it. I'm yeah. getting something out of it. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Everybody like, you wins. Know, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I can do this. Number one, I have 17 years of doing paperwork. I yeah. love the organization. I love the flow. I love the contract, which is crazy. A lot of people are like, ooh, paperwork. I'm like, I love it. It's the scaffolding of what I do. Yeah, yeah. But then, yeah. I, I And then I was like, well, I could do the transaction coordinating piece but what I'm finding is I'm getting as much out of it as I give to the the work. And it's the collaboration piece. And I didn't know until I moved to Colorado that it was the collaboration piece that made me tick in real estate. I had no idea. It was like, you know, you're so busy, you're falling forward the entire time. You know, all 17 years, you're falling forward or following the latest trend or trying to be better on social media or trying to write your goals, which I don't do. Just all of those things. And then you're following the newest, shiniest object at all yep, times. All the trying time. Trying to master TikTok or trying to, <laughs> w- with age and also with years, then you figure out I'm good at these eight things and that's what I'm doing and that's it. Yeah. The rest of it, you let slide or well, you just don't do it. You exactly. Can't. If you don't like it, you're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. I say it all and the time. And also with a team for me and working collaboratively in Colorado and then also in Oregon, I have someone where we're mutually invested in the results. And so I want to do my best work every single time because I could not stand letting that partner down. I can't do it. Yeah. And no. beyond the fact that I'm motivated to make sure my clients have the best experience, that person also, oh, it was so funny. So we had a listing come on and um, one of my teammates, I'll name him Eric, he'll be okay with it, <laughs> was absolutely losing it over, we had it staged and he was coming undone because he swore the dining room table that the stagers <laughs> used is an Ikea table. <laughs> And in this million dollar home, this list, million dollar listing, he couldn't handle the Ikea table. (laughs) He couldn't, he, he, I mean, it was like, we're losing it over an Ikea table. And I was like, I don't care if it's an Ikea table or a wine barrel, like who cares? (laughs) But he was, he was trapped, you know, he was stuck in this cycle of, I can't believe they put an Ikea table in there. And I was like, an Ikea table is fresh. It has no owner. It's not Grandma Nancy's old historic dining table. It's just a black dining table that everybody (laughs) could see in their lives. Right. And it's just funny because I was literally like, okay, I need you to step away from the photos (laughs) and the table (laughs) because this house is going on the market tomorrow. Yeah. 
let's move on. Yeah. And I said, if you think a million dollar house is going to be sold by sold or not sold by a black Ikea table, we have big problems we need to talk about. <laughs> right. So it's just funny when you have a partner, you can get stuck places. Yeah. And that partner's like, wait a minute, this is not the place to get stuck. Right. Like, not on the black Ikea, Ikea stage staging table right it's just not the right place for this energy yeah. take a break come yeah. back tomorrow and we're going to sell a million, million dollar house exactly exactly and i love that you took the words out of my mouth when you talked about collaboration and collaboration can be with anybody it can be with your transaction yeah. coordinator it can be with your social media manager or the person who helps you with phone calls or or whatever those are all collaborations. And I think if people think of it a little bit more that way than just somebody who does the work, I feel like they're going to get so much more out of it. Both people will, because when you're collaborating, you're working together to achieve the common goal and to be there for each other. I think that's awesome. Yeah, no, it's super important. And everybody has a different way about going about something. And I have one in real estate transactions, you lay out the path you think you're going to head down. You lay out the, you know, there's options and you have to be flexible, but you generally have a sense of potentially where it's going to go. And then when one thing after another kind of slides from your vision of where it's heading, you can get stuck. And that does not serve your clients. It doesn't serve the co-op broker. It doesn't serve any, the, the title people. It doesn't serve anybody yeah. when you're stuck. And when somebody can say, a teammate or someone that you trust and value their opinion can say, you're stuck, we need to move a different direction mm -hmm. and potentially give you an idea you don't have. Yeah, because you're in it. You're too, you're, you're in, in it. You're, you're, yeah, you're, you're not you're looking committed. at it. You're in it. <laughs> right. You can't you're see it. You're committed to your you view. You can't see out you're of it. You're committed to your plan. Yeah. And for somebody to say, hey, um, heads up here, your plan's not working. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is, you're just we creating. We can stay a... here stuck or <laughs> we can. You can hang out there or I could, I could give you about three ideas to get your way back onto the track. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love um, that. Everybody needs so, that person. <laughs> yeah. That for me has been the critical piece. And my, our team just relies on humor. I mean, we have the best time. It's okay. just. Let's just, let's just talk about that because I mentioned in the beginning about you being on your local news and, uh, your fun with COVID if I dare, I say, but you had, how long had you been in Colorado? Less than a year? Yeah. When yeah. It was, yeah. I was starting COVID a year happened? too. Yeah. Okay. So, and you've got two teenage boys and you're in a house full of young men. So First of all, I need to know, do the boys cringe? Or do they love it? Are they like, oh my God, mom, stop? Or, or yeah. do they just go with it? There's a lot of, oh my gosh, <laughs> okay, good. mom, mom, like, what are you doing <laughs> are now? You doing? And they roll their eyes. And I had enlisted them to be on my photographer. Photographer. Team, but, I mean, and that doesn't mean I enlisted them. I just told them they had to do this because yeah. okay. we were all trapped at home. And I okay, was like, how? I'm going to have some fun. I'm trapped right. here with you people. And how did um, this start? I don't know how it started. All of a sudden, I just, I think it was the stress of the situation of COVID and, and being trapped at home and not knowing what was going on. And we're talking costumes here. Yeah. It was like, I'm just going to start some weird costume situation for a while and see how long I can do it for. I don't, and I have to know. Okay. So backstory, Christy, I don't know where, do you have this stuff like in your house? Did you go buy yes, it, rent it? Have like it. You just have it. Okay. So clearly she's got like a costume closet because <laughs> it all started with how can she fight co against COVID in the beginning, like with <laughs> right, masks, right. not like your, you know, our typical mask that we're wearing right now, but like, what was the first one? Well, my Do mom sent me, like, I think the first one, I was just getting started on this idea. My mom sent me a picture of a bra that she had cut in half <laughs> right. and used as a face mask. Uh, yeah. And I was literally like, what is going on here? Like, why are we cutting up our own bras and right. putting them over our face? And then I started like just, I, I mean, it was hysterical. Remember those first face masks? They were so uncomfortable or yep. people were just making 
random face shields. So I decided I was going to start using my recycling bin <laughs> to make face masks. And then I would make my sons come to the grocery store and take pictures of me, like hiding in the aisles. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't just and doing this at home, people. She was out in public. Time, I, I wore a green like bodysuit with a cape yep. and a mask on and went to Safeway. I, I don't know. It just took off. And the boys would kind of chuckle. But yeah. they weren't pleased. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't know. It was something to do when we were yeah. all just absolutely trapped in our homes. Yeah. I would spend time during the day coming up with my next big idea. You know, people say, oh, you have so many costumes. I'm like, half of that stuff was like garbage recycling. <laughs> they weren't costumes. I mean, I was using a straw, the top of a strawberry container, you know, across my face from Costco. Oh my gosh. You know, I mean, it wasn't like a costume. Right, right. Okay, so how did the local news find you? And what in the world? I don't know. So I had been doing, you know, every other day posting something crazy. And um, on and Facebook, right? Just on, on Facebook, Facebook and Instagram, Instagram. And somebody took the picture and submitted it to our local newspaper. <laughs> And so some people were fashioning masks out of really normal things, you know, but I was using like Halloween costumes and yeah. recycling and garbage and I don't know, whatever came to me. And so I, I don't know, they ran the story and they said tongue in cheek, you know, Christy Marshall uses her recycling to fashion face shields while going to the grocery store. And I, I don't know, it, it lifted me. Yeah, <laughs> lifted it, me at that time. Yeah, and all of us, I will say, because I was dying, I was sending it to everybody. Like, oh my god, and it's so you. That's what made it so great. It was like, that's such a Christy thing. Like, I, I would never. I would be horrified. I couldn't do it. Like, I but, know. Well, and sometimes I couldn't. Well, I don't know what happened. I just, I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna show that this is a stressful time, and I was making fun of some of the news as it was coming out. You know, when we were being instructed to inject ourselves with bleach and use <laughs> ultraviolet lights inside our bodies and all that craziness. I was like, this is insane. Yeah. Like if yeah. you watch the news and try and make heads to tails of COVID and trying to keep your family safe and having yeah. your groceries delivered. And, and like, this is absolutely more than a human being should be asked to deal with. Yeah. And not yeah. me personally, I meant collectively, all of us, it was scary. Yeah. It was crazy. We didn't have the information we needed. And so my, always my response is go to humor. Right. Yeah. Find the funny, find, poke at it. Just make it feel less overwhelming and more, I don't know, maybe it makes it more comfortable to me just being able to poke a laugh at it. Yeah. And you, and you also, I mean, a couple of your pictures, you had your, real estate sign in there and oh, it yeah. wasn't you know and that was just again that was a natural way it was it was you and so it wasn't like oh I'm gonna do this so that I can get real estate business or whatever right. it just right no it had nothing I was like if anything this is gonna chase real estate business away from me because I'm currently <laughs> shopping in a green bodysuit at Safeway I mean do you know what I mean I was yeah. like but people are like oh she's a human too oh she's funny oh she doesn't, she's making fun of herself. She's not, I don't know what it showed him. It just showed him. You. I don't, it showed we're in him this you. together. We're in yeah. this together. And yes. that's when, and in those, those signs from all things real estate, um, you know, together we'll see it through. I mean, I think I bought 65 of those things and I took them to at least 40 brokers in hub real estate who were desperate to have one. It was no contact. I put it in their front yards, but I had just joined um, hub, hub real estate at that time. Nobody knew me from anyone, but all of a sudden I was Christy Marshall who delivers a sign and plants it in your front yard. Yeah, I mean, they didn't even know I was a broker with them because yeah. COVID had hit yeah. and I was contacting them. And so that kept me busy for a couple of weeks. And then for all the neighbors and friends, around I did um together we will see this through signs and they're still up around the neighborhood mm -hmm. and that was purely out of the I mean it didn't even have my real estate information on it it wasn't a marketing tool for me people were so happy to be touched by a human being at that time I wasn't touching anybody not not that I was physically, physically. touching anybody <laughs> But do you know what I mean? I was thinking emotionally, about them yeah. emotionally, just putting a sign in their yard saying together, we're going to see this through made people feel like they were on a team. 
Yeah. Yeah. And they weren't alone. She's thinking of my family today and whether they kept them up or they didn't keep them up is not of concern to me. Yeah. Some of them are still up. They're not going to forget you. That is the bottom line. And you did something that you got something out of it and doing marketing things organically is always going to be your best way to go. Like, yeah. Well, and it was from the bottom of my heart. Like I want these people to know I'm here and I'm thinking about them and we're on a team and we're going to get through this. And I don't know, it was just, and it was fun for me. It was a reason for me to be driving around and um, checking out new neighborhoods neighborhoods and dropping signs. But then everybody who received one eventually figured out that I was like the sign fairy. And so they were seeing them (laughs) all over town and they'd be like, Oh, I didn't know you knew who so-and-so or how do you know this person? Yeah. I didn't just put them in signs unless I knew the people and had their permission to do it. Yeah. 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 So it was really funny. It became like this odd, like scavenger hunt where people are like, now, how do you know the person living on this street? And I'd be like, Oh, I met them at the PTO meeting and they have kids my age. It just dropping the signs helped connect my world. Yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> right. And also what a great way to get to know your community. And I mean, you're just getting so many things out of it. And I think that you probably didn't expect all of that either. When you did it, no, you did it because I just wanted you to give them wanted- a sign. I didn't know what else to do for people. Like, I was like, this is scary and overwhelming. What can I possibly do for people to let them know? Like we're, we're, we're going to be okay. Yeah. And again, those are all great marketing things. I think realtors often think that, I guess marketing's changed a lot over the years, but organically and being you and all of that stuff are always going to be the foundation of of good marketing. It just is. Right. It's the only way you're going to do it anyway. Well, and you you know, I've never been, like I've said already, I've never been a corporate broker. You know, I've never been the one that just checks the boxes and just does it according to a company form. That doesn't work for me. I shine and my, when I bring myself to the table, you know, when I'm up, I come up to Portland every, I don't know, about four to five weeks. Mm -hmm. And what I end up doing when I'm there, it's not the physical act of real estate that I'm doing. It's not the taking the photos. It's not the putting the signs in the ground. It's not the measuring of the houses because I'm a professional and I hire professionals to do those things for me. It's the dropping by to see my clients and friends, talking to them, bringing them a bottle of wine, asking them, is their divorce final? Have they, you know, how there's, how's their boyfriend? How's your kid doing in school? How's COVID affected you? Standing on the front porch, just saying, I just needed to see you. Yeah. Yep. I just needed to check in with you. It's not because I'm selling your house or not selling your house. It's not because we're in a real estate transaction. It's because I care about you and I have a way to provide you solutions at any point or stage in your life. You find yourself. It's always about the relationships. It's about the relationships. It is. It is. You know, and so when I come to Portland, people are like, oh, you're coming for work. And I'm like, yeah, I am coming for work, but it's to connect with my people. It's not to put a lockbox on a house. <laughs> yeah. I've got that figured out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, I'm not flying into town to, to take the photos. I have a professional photographer that I can give access to your home using my lockbox from anywhere on this planet. Yep. Yep. And, and giving them that information that they don't, people don't know how real estate works. They don't know the no, process or no anything. idea. Just like, I don't know how to fix a car, you right. know, it's yeah. the same thing. And so the more that we can have those discussions with people, the more comfortable they are with real estate, you know, people either want to use a realtor or don't, but the bottom line is we're all in this together in terms of educating the public. I Mm -hmm. say it all the time. And I think that there are ways to do that with social media where you're still organic, you're still building relationships. You're not telling them how hard your job is. You're just simply talking about some of the ins and outs, the things that your clients don't know during the process because they shouldn't, because you're, you need to do your realtors do their job so well that just like you said earlier, the client shouldn't know half of the stuff that's happening because you're yeah, handling it. Yeah, they don't know it. what you're up to every day, every minute of the day. <laughs> yep. Well, and I've always said I've never sold a single thing in my entire life. You know, people were like, oh, you're in sales? I was like, no. Nope. I've, I've never, okay. And, th- th- you know, they'll look at you like, well, but you're a real estate broker. And I'm like, that's not sales. Right. 
it looks like it and it sounds like it. And I can understand why you believe that. But I was like, I've never sold a house to someone who didn't need one. Yeah. Like I never sold a house to someone if they didn't like it. Want it. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I'm not in the impossible. Uh, uh, Yeah. Right. I'm like, if you need four bedrooms, I I'm not going to sell you a two bedroom. I'm like the clients determine the house, not me. You're just facilitating a house. Yeah. I've coordinated the purchase of a house. Yeah. I've been a cruise director along the way I've provided solutions, but Yeah. I'm not like, Hey, I've got a great idea. Why don't you buy a house that backs to a freeway? And someone goes, Oh, okay. (laughs) Great. Right. Like no way. So I'm not in sales. I guess maybe I'm in sales of myself. Yeah. You know, I mean, we sell ourselves, but I don't do it. It's all organic. I don't have a plan. Yeah. No, (laughs) you're an entrepreneur. You're you Well, but you do have a plan. Your plan is to be you you've already said that yeah. and to be organic and building relationships that's that's one hell of a plan like right. and i think that recognizing that and you know that and i think that's how your business is is built and i think that that's very clear when somebody meets you in person you are the same person in social media that you are in real no, life that's, yeah that's true sometimes i wish it was so funny because during covid um one of the title companies reached out and said oh so you know when you're during your downtime we could do a social media cleanup and i was like you can't clean up mine <laughs> like it is years of chaos and personal stuff and just wacky situations i've gotten myself into um, it's a lot of laughs. It's you, you, it's not for everyone, and I'm fine with that. But I was just cracking up because they were like, "Oh, we could do a social media cleanup," and I'm like, mm. "You actually can't, right? You can't no. clean this up. No, it is it it is <laughs> and if me. You did, people it is would I. Be like, yeah, where where <laughs> did Christy go? Right, right. What yeah. happened to her? No, you don't want that. You don't want no. that. Well, I really appreciate you, Christy. I reached out last minute and. <laughs> And I'm like, were, what could I possibly have to say? I don't know. I, well, and all the time people, I love that you're doing something new and you're trying something different and this might be one time, maybe you start your own podcast. You never Seriously. know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've so, got stuff to say. I'm, I would probably have to do it just by myself. I have so many words. I can't interview people. You can totally do that. And I can help <laughs> you with that. And I'm always telling people they should do a podcast because you just got to do it. And, and, you know, being intentional, you don't want to waste your time because nobody has time for that. Right. But there are way like different ways of doing what you do, but just having different platforms of doing it. Podcasting right. gets kind of forgotten about. So, and I know it's kind of the thing to do ish right now, but people are like, I've never done that before. I don't know what that means. But so I say that to say you tried something new today and I appreciate it. And you are fantastic. And I love talking to you as always. How can people reach you? We're going to put your social medias and all that stuff in the, in the show notes, but also like can somebody email you or how can oh, yeah. they reach you? Yeah, they can email me. They can text me, whatever they need. Yeah, I'm always, I love talking to people about whatever their next big idea is. You know, I've been around a long time and involved with a lot of different people in this industry. And so whether or not I have created the correct situation for somebody else, I can generally push you to the right person. Yeah. Find the right person. You're yeah. a connector. Just I'm like a connector. Me. That's you my are. thing. I love that. All right, y'all reach out to Christy. If you have any questions about, I promise you she'll respond back. She loves this stuff as you, if you can't tell already. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me and pushing me out of my comfort zone. (laughs) Please. What (laughs) comfort zone is that? Maybe I jumped out of my comfort zone. I don't know. (laughs) Right. Exactly. No, but I can't wait for people to listen and thank you for being on. You're welcome. 